Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen, baby. Yes, amen. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Thank Praise you, Father. Amen. 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 My wife and I, we, we sing together. We sing together and um, we pray together. And um, that's one of our favorites. Uh, it really is. And um, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Hmm. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. One of my. Probably my favorite verse. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 and 8, on the verse 8, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Naked came I into this world, and naked will I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, Lord has been really, been really busy with me lately. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here in the, uh, in the background that you do not see. But the um, Lord has been really uh, busy um, giving things unto your servant to share with you. And what I thought was going to be shared today isn't going to be shared today. It's going to be on Friday. And then in coming things that are coming. But today, today, please get your authorized, <laughs> please get your authorized version of the scriptures. It's very meet. Today is Wednesday, the 23rd. And it's very meet because tomorrow is a day which Americans call Thanksgiving. And you have 365 days out of the year to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And like it, also, you know, here, here's a little assignment for you. You know, the Psalms, 
book of Psalms. Yeah, yeah. Life is in the Psalms. You watch this video today. You, you. This is five minutes. So even you heretics and uh, those of you out there, you, this is in your time frame that you can handle. Read Psalm 107 today. Read Psalm 107 today. And you will see several times within Psalm 107. Uh, like, for example, Psalm 107, verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's verse 8. Then verse 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then verse 21. <laughs> Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, works plural. That's talking about his grace and the works that he did for man within the dispensation. The very first dispensation he clothed them with skins uh, from animals and sent them out. Okay? All right? He brought Abraham onto the, you know, he showed Abraham the promised land. And he promised him that uh, his seed is going to inherit it. And he established the Hebraic line. Okay? Uh, in the law, he gave the law. Today in this dispensation, it is finished. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And he shed his blood on the cross. Yes, the works of God. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when we come to him on his terms, he saves us by his grace through our faith. We have much to be thankful for. When you look this, now this book I've read out of in several videos before. It's out of print. Uh, before we, uh, by the way, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Follow me along. Check me out. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Be a Berean for once in your life and search the scriptures whether these things be so. Okay? We're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 on to verse 24 today. You're all very familiar with it. But we got to keep in mind about how Christianity has turned the focus of everything is about you and about your well-being and about your good life now and has taken it away from the Lord and has all like it's all about you and your liberty to be a Catholic for a day it's all about your liberty it's all about you Thanksgiving here in America you have 365 days out of a year to give thanks unto the Lord why make such a big to do about one day Okay? All right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why make so much ado about one day? But see, what originally started as a day of praise and thanks and even humility and fasting has turned into sports entertainment, gluttony, alcoholism, debauchery, fornication that leads on to what? Lasciviousness and greed with the coming Black Friday. And hence, it begins. But I want to read this to you out of this book. Um, if you can find this uh, uh, from an out of print uh, seller, this, this is interesting. This is interesting. John Hancock. John Hancock. Now, check this out. 
In circumstances dark as these, it becomes us as men and Christians, I'm not a Christian, to reflect that whilst every prudent measure should be taken to ward off the impending judgments, all confidence must be withheld from the means we use and reposed only on that God who rules in the armies of heaven and without whose blessing the best human counsels are but foolishness and all created power vanity. It is the happiness of his church, the church of the living God, that when the powers of earth and hell combined against it, that the throne of grace is of the easiest access, and its, its appeal thither is graciously invited by the Father of mercies, who has assured it, that when his children ask bread, he will not give them a stone. Resolve! that it be, and hereby is recommended to the good people of this colony, of all denominations, that Thursday, here's the thing of Thursday, but you're going to note the difference of the month here, because, uh, what is it, the, the last Thursday of every month of November is Thanksgiving here in America. You have 365 days. To give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Read Psalm 107, dear friend. Read Psalm 107. While you're feasting and stuffing yourself. And falling asleep watching football. And watching all the Hallmark cute little Christian movies. And getting prepared to celebrate your liberty. Yeah. That Thursday... The eleventh day of May next be set apart as a day of public humiliation, fasting, and prayer to confess, to confess the sins, to implore the forgiveness of all our transgression, and a blessing on the husbandry, manufacturers, and other lawful employments of this people, and especially that the union of the American colonies in defense of their rights. For hitherto we desire to thank Almighty God may be preserved and confirmed and that America may soon behold a gracious interposition of heaven by the order of the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Provincial Congress, John Hancock, President. Within this book here, there are many references to Thanksgiving. And you look historically in this uh, pagan Jesuit nation of America, uh, Thanksgiving was far of what this holiday has made it into. You have 365 days to give thanks unto the Lord. Why relegate to just one? Why? But if you're going to observe a day of Thanksgiving... How are you going to observe it? With gluttony? With doing what you want to do? Or is it a day where this is a worthy, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I don't know why the Lord would have mercy on such a wretch like me. I don't know why the Lord would save and have patience for a wretch like me. You know, when you look, when I look back of how I fail every single day and how I sin every single day, how every day is a battle with my pride, how the Lord is patient, merciful, provides for us and cares for us. My thanks, our thanks, fall short. But see, we are to give thanks nonetheless. You know what I'm talking about? Or are you one of those who have saved yourself, Mr. Self-Righteous Pig, by I just believed, or I can utter something, or that you're of a certain demographic or a certain skin color, 
I don't think any of you have those that I mentioned just now. I don't think any of you have the slightest fathom of what grace really means. Because it's all about you. It's all about you and what you want to do and what's uh, your liberty to do. It's all about you. It's all about you. First hmm. Thessalonians chapter 5. Follow me along. You, we've read this. The, the Christians make this a cliche. But we're going we're gonna to analyze this a little bit. A little deeply today. Because uh, the, the video that I thought I wanted to do, Lord's like, no, you, you save that for Friday. Friday's video will be on the backup channel. But um, you save that for Friday. You save that for Friday. When you see the world and the Christians who make everything about what they want to do, about their liberty. It's all about you. But today, we've read this. Like I said, the Christians make this a cliche. But when you realize that this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I am chief. I'm worse than you are. I'm worse than you are. I sin every day. I'm bad. I'm rotten. But yet, the Lord, through his mercy, through his grace, saved me. He broke me of my self-righteousness. It's my fault. I put him on that cross. My hand held the hammer that put hit those nails in his hands and in his feet and put that crown of thorns on his head. You know, the crown of thorns. You know, I, was th I think things that I shouldn't. My hands touch and go places like I, I shouldn't. Your feet guide you in the ways that I shouldn't. The crown of thorns, the nails. I did that to the Lord. And see, let's see, have mercy. Let's see, pardon you, forgive you. He's going to send you to hell. Unless the Lord save you, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever, boy. Look at me. Okay? You're playing games with the Lord. You're a fool. You think that, you're, yeah, soul annihilationism. Yeah, you burn up for like a, like a tinder and then it's, no, no, no. You're playing games, boy. See, the Lord has a prescribed way for his grace to be for you, his salvation. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness, thinking that you're a good person and that you can save yourself and that you were worth dying for because you weren't. Then you have to take responsibility. You can't blame other people. It's on you. You can't take a half-hearted responsibility just like our father Abraham or excuse me our father Adam did not Abraham excuse me our father Adam we are all descended of Adam okay Adam is the father first father okay he is okay Adam as we all know referred to as the Adamic nature the woman that thou gavest to be with me gave me of the tree and then yeah I did eat Okay? You got to take responsibility and accountability. And you realize, unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. You better be afraid of that Lord of ours, because he's the one who's going to put you in hell. Why? Because you didn't come to him on his terms. You were a thief and a robber. You booted the door out of the way and climbed up some other way and want to convince yourself and everyone else that you're saved because of something you have done. Bravo. Take a bow in hell there, buddy. But if you are saved, and it's like it says, uh, you know, that verse in Ecclesiastes 1, verse 18, 
uh, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 18. All right. For in much wisdom is much grief, and much fear of the Lord is much grief. Yeah. I'm going to have to give an account to him. So are you. Okay. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. The more we learn of how perfect, pure, and holy our Lord is, the more we hate ourselves. Why the Lord would ever save a wretch like me, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And if you're saved, born again, and converted to the church of the living God, you can't answer that either. But these Christians, whoa, he saved me so I can do work for him. I, I, I'm i not that bad of a person. I'm, I'm not bad as some people. And I got, hey, I got all these worldly means. So the, naturally the Lord saved me so I could be of use to him. You egocentric, pompous ass. Brad, you just swore. Um, an ass, you know, a donkey, foal of an ass, okay? Um, if you ever met, you ever been around donkeys before? <laughs> there was a, a farmer I used to work at, a donkey who, um, you know, gates for farms. They have like this locking thing where there's a groove and a piece of metal and you put the chain in there a certain way and, you know, we can just lift it up and open it. But mostly horses and donkeys, they can't figure it out. Well, there, uh, the farm I used to work at, there was a donkey that figured out to take its teeth, lift up the chain and open up the gate. And then it would go into the feed room. And then um, uh, if we were stupid and left it open, and almost eat itself to death off of the grains. But it would do that, and we eventually had to padlock the gate because this donkey, this ass, would take off the chain and then come out, and then it would look at us. It's like, ah, Jacques is out again. <laughs> and that thing would just look at us like, ha, 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 look at me. Stubborn. Stubborn. If you've ever dealt with donkeys before. Stubborn creatures, really, and egotistical because that donkey, you, it, it figured out how to get the chain off of the lay out of the thing to open the gate, let itself go, and all the rest of the horses, and you have to spend over an hour trying to chase down the horses, and that donkey just uh, standing there looking at you like, ha ha, look at what I did. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 16 on verse 22. Two. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 on verse 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Yes, because the Lord had mercy upon us. He saved us. Why? We don't know. Because with much wisdom comes much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Lord, the more we examine ourselves in the light of Scripture, it's like, why would you even bother with the wretch like me? Or are you, are you the superstar, the elitist, the upper echelon, huh? Yeah. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. No, but we're to cast all our care upon the Lord. That doesn't mean be flippant or care less. But our Lord is the one who provides for us. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Okay? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the Christians... It's like, believe it, and you will receive it. <laughs> like God's a genie in the bottle. And see, that that's in one of the um, uh, name it and claim it heresy kind of things that comes from the, the uh, secret, okay? That you have the power to control God, to work for you, to get your best life now. No, 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 that's heresy. That's Satanism. That's Satanism. No, no. 
Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. <laughs> be thankful that the Lord hears you. Be thankful that you are able to speak unto the Lord. Be thankful for his grace. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, and you are the church of the living God, and the world can be going to hell in a handbasket, and all this stuff going on around you, and you're at peace. Why? Because this is not our home. This is not where we belong. Uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. These are light afflictions. These are light afflictions. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Not through your own um, clever stuff that you can think of. Not through your own flesh, no, but through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, our Lord is just. Yeah, absolutely. Whatsoever things are pure, Oh, our Lord is pure, isn't he? Whatsoever things are lovely, read the Song of Solomon sometime. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So right there, verse 8 is all about our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so, what are we to do? We are to think of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to go to him and to learn of him. For he is lonely, lowly, meek in heart. Yes, yes he is. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 again. Rejoice evermore. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Romans chapter 12. We're going to hit Romans chapter 12 a couple times today. Romans chapter 12, verses 10 on verse 13. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. We prefer our own. I'd rather spend all day with my wife and my best friend, with my sister, with my brethren, than be, among, be amongst the lost people. Now, we are in the world. We are not of the world. We got to be out in the world, you know, to do things and whatnot. We are witnesses, ambassadors for Christ Jesus, yes, but when it comes down to, like, fellowship, we, we want our brethren. We want our sisters. Okay? There is no desire whatsoever to be around lost people within me. Is there, in, is there with you? I hope not. There is. You got some examining you need to do, boy. Girl. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, the blessed hope. And the blessed hope is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our blessed hope. He is our hope. So rejoicing in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope. Okay? Patient <laughs> in tribulation. These are light afflictions. It's easy for you to say, Brad. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Have you seen the righteous begging bread? Hmm? Have you, excuse me, have you seen his seed begging bread? Excuse me. Hmm? Have the righteous been forsaken? Hmm? Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. How, how do we fare at that? Uh, continuing instant in prayer. Hmm? How, how do we how do we deal with that? <laughs> how do we how how are we at that? When you say, "Well, let's pray about it." Okay, okay. Uh, give me an hour or two when we get instant. No, let's pray about it right now. Hmm? Hmm? Don't worry, we're going to be getting to that one you're thinking of. Okay, distributing to the necessity necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Lord takes care of our necessities. Amen, he does. Amen, he does. Given to hospitality. 
What would happen if a brother, ah, I got to hit this again. What would happen if a brother or a sister arrived at your door unannounced? What would you do? Oh, well, we're, we're not ready for you, brother. Or, oh, like, uh. Hmm? Or would you be like, well, I don't know. Hmm? What if? Let me put it to you like this. Okay, you know the big shots? The big shots. Could someone go up to John MacArthur's house, knock on his door, and have John MacArthur bring them into their to his mansion and feed them and talk with them? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just just to name a few, just to name one. Huh? What about some other people? Some of these YouTube personalities, huh? What would happen if you were to show up at their door, brother, sister? And they claim to be your brother, yeah? What would they do? Would they be hospital? Would they be hospitable? Hmm? Would they lodge you for a night, huh? Would they feed you? Would they talk with you? Or would they be like, ah, I'm clean, I'm clean? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Given the hospitality. Yeah, given to hospitality. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, verses two on to verse four. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Continuing instant in prayer. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready. Always be ready. Always be prepared. Don't let yourself get caught with the pants down, okay? That's why I always tell you to, when you leave the house, I don't care if it's to go get the mail. I don't care. Take a sword with you, because you never know. Like I've told you before, I, I that happened to me one time when I went out without a sword and I needed it, and it's like, well, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, okay? So be ready. And when it comes to prayer, don't wait until the submarine is about to sink. You know, when you say to someone, well, I need to pray about that. I want to pray about it. Or let's pray about it. Pray about it. Okay? Come on. Rapido, rapido. Come on. Let's do it. Huh? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Oh, doctrine, excuse me. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers? having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Yeah. Yeah. You got these Christians telling you what you want to hear, especially with the month that's coming up. It's all about you and your liberty to do what you want to do. Yeah. 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 Don't want to endure sound doctrine. But see, being ready, being instant, in season, out of season, being instant in prayer, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And then there are people out there who would argue, well, if I'm always in prayer, I would get nothing done. You know what? To that, you know, the Lord rebuke you, by the way. You come up with an answer with that. That's a very telling response. I've run into that. It's like, well, if I spend all this time praying, I'll get nothing done. You show me someone who spends two hours in prayer, and I'll show you someone who is doing more for the Lord than someone who is always on the move, always on the move, doesn't even have, so busy, doesn't even have time to read the scriptures. That's how you answer that one, boy. 
someone who who's well you, hey you know when you're on your knees for almost two hours you now this might have something to do with age i'm almost 50 years of age i'm 48 years of age but you know when you spend two hours on in prayer on your knees you know your your knees and your feet get numb okay you know that actually hurts even if you try even if you're kneeling on a pillow Okay, and then then you try to get up, especially this. Now this has more to do with the those who are gray of hair. Okay, granted, but then then you try to get up. <laughs> okay, it's like ah uh, ah uh, that's that's a weariness of the flesh. That's a weariness of the flesh, and you spend that time in prayer to the Lord. You're doing more for the Lord and with our Lord. Than someone who is too busy going to church meetings, doing this because the church says so, and yet too busy, they don't even have time to read the scriptures or spend time with the Lord in prayer. A person's prayer life is really telling about their relationship with the Lord. Very telling. Very, very telling. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a thorn in the flesh, my heart and my COPD. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord, for being just and letting the consequences of my actions as a lost man keep me humble. Thank you, Lord, for taking the false away from me. Thank you, Lord, for um, making us to depend on you. For if you do not, then we're, we're doomed. Thank you, Lord, for the hard times. Because absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Okay? You know what measure your relationship is with the Lord when you're going through things. I mean, you read the book of Job on this. Okay? And all the, on all this, he sinned not. Okay, or charge God foolishly. The Lord, uh, Job said to his wife, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord only and not evil as well? Okay, all right. It's easy to thank the Lord for the blessings of good things, right? But what about the blessings of hardship? What about the blessings of trials? Hmm? How are those blessings? Because uh, the harder things get for you, the closer you ought to cleave unto our Lord, right? And maybe with some of you, maybe with some of you, maybe that's part of the reason why you're going through so much. Because you've gotten away from the Lord and you're too dependent on your commentaries or watching brother so-and-so doing so-and-so and you're not spending the time that you need to with the Lord. So he's going to bring to you things like it says in Amos chapter 4. Uh, I've done all this stuff unto you and yet you have not returned unto me. Okay? Okay? It's easy to thank the Lord. It's easy to thank the Lord when things are going good. The true measure, the meat of your metal is how you deal with sufferings. How you deal with the trials. Do you go to the Lord? Are you are them knees sore? Are your feet numb? Or are you going to the devil and the world, the flesh and the devil for comfort, for answers? Hmm? Google it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5.20 Ephesians 5.20 mm. Yes. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, Ephesians 5.20 Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. 
Yeah. Yeah. You keep saying that to try to convince yourself. Yeah. Paul himself said, Therefore I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Because when I am weak, then am I strong? How am I strong when I'm weak? Because that's when you're cleaving onto the Lord in your weakness. That's when you're strong. That's when you're strong. You're not strong, no. But the Lord that lives in you, he will quicken you and give you that strength. Hence, by you cleaving onto the Lord, that's your strength. That's your strength. We've talked about that before. Okay? And also Colossians chapter 2. We're going to hit Colossians a couple times today too. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 8. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, abounding therein with thanksgiving. No matter what, <laughs> Lord, I deserve this. Thank you for letting uh, recompense fall upon me. Thank you for this trial and tribulation. Because, Lord, the more... Uh, uh, my best friend, our brother, uh, when going through that stuff with his mother, I mean, he... It's like uh, all this stuff that I'm going through with my mother, it's making me cleave onto you even more. Got to remember that, brother. Okay? But see, here's, here's, here's the thing. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Deck the halls with balls of folly. <coughs> Excuse me. After the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. I heard it said that suffering makes philosophers out of men. You gotta beware. Got to beware. Suffering makes you think. Yes, but who are you thinking upon? Hmm? And while we're in Colossians, okay, and it says, uh, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Okay, some of the ways that our Lord is going to build you, build you, is by making you go through the ringer. Okay? In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He knows better than you do. And he knows what's best for you, even though we like to think we know what's better for us than God does. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 and verse 5. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. <laughs> and let's keep reading a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. I, I'm telling you, when you're going through personal things and people know it, it's like, how can you stay? How? 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 Let me tell you about the reason of the hope that is in me. Okay? Don't have to answer all your questions, especially if they're foolish questions and you don't want to hear the truth but just want to be disputatious. But you want to know the reason of the hope that is in me? The hope that is in you? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope? That hope that is in you? Let me tell you about the Lord. Let me tell you about the Lord. Hmm? Have you ever considered that your sufferings are a testimony unto the lost to see so that they can see you of the church of the living God going through something as how we ought to by cleaving onto the Lord? Okay? All right? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear the truth. Yeah, I bet you don't. Romans chapter 12. 
Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Quench not the spirit. Beware of philosophy and vain deceit. Quench not the spirit. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving it to? Yourself or to others who are going to behold you as an ambassador of Christ. Quench not the spirit. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to do that. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the world, I'm gonna go to man. The world, the devil. I don't want to hear that. Avoid the truth, but like the plague. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, First John chapter two. First John chapter two. How does this have to do with quenching the spirit? When you quench the spirit, you're disobeying the Lord and not doing what He says, right? And also, you're quenching the spirit when you're doing something that you know you ought not to, but you justify it. And when it comes to us justifying our sins, oh boy, the list can get longer than my arm. The list can go uh, taller than six foot four. Okay? Absolutely. The, the, the depth of our justification of our pride, of our flesh, of our sin. Okay? Yeah. What is that of? That is of the world. That wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. That's why we're looking at these admonitions to not be worldly. Okay? Who makes excuses? Lost people. Lost people. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's the first thing mentioned, the lust of the eyes, oh, that looks so pretty, and the pride of life. Look at all my property. Look at my mansions. Look at my cars. Look at my swimming pools. Look at the clothing. Look at that. I want that. I want that. A distraction. Oh, my life's going to hell here. I'm going to turn on the television and look at all these fake people who, who says, then is it, you know what I'm saying? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but uh, is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hmm. Yes, and Ephesians, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Not Romans, Brad. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 21 on to verse 32. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, and the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. Taught by him. The Lord is that spirit. Hello. Okay. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, the Adamic nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, the new man, the hidden man of the heart, our Lord Jesus Christ, you walk in his ways. You do what he says. You don't quench the spirit. How? What is the main ingredient of quenching the spirit? Flesh. Like what happens between actual saved brethren of the church of the living God who can't talk to each other. What gets in the way? Every single time. Flesh. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We are the work of God. We are the handiwork of God. Okay? 
Okay, well, the place there, of course, we've got to go to, to here now. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Okay, for by grace are ye saved through faith in that, not of yourselves, not of your belief, or because you can say something, or because of your skin color, or your elect or non-elect, no. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. A new creature in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, go back to Ephesians 4. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh, don't go to bed angry. Don't do that. <laughs> it's very bad. And when you are angry and sin, and you go to bed angry, you're giving place, to, neither give place to the devil. You're giving place to the devil if you do that. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, okay? Putting away lying, okay? You quench the spirit. You're giving place to the devil. Simply put. Simply put, okay? Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt, putrid, rank, rotting words. Communication. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. You quench the Spirit. You give place to the devil. You're grieving God who dwells within you. The Lord is that Spirit. I've told this to you many times. I'm going to say it again. Watch out for these people who are against eternal security. Once saved, always saved. They are of the devil. Okay? Once saved, always saved. And this dispensation is doctrine, is absolute truth. You cannot lose what you do not. It's, it's not yours. You don't possess it. It's God's gift. Okay? It's God's gift. You can't lose what ain't yours to lose. Once saved, always saved. And when you quench the Spirit, you're grieving the Lord. Okay? Let all bitterness, root of bitterness, and bitterness defileth. I have problems with bitterness myself. I have problems with bitterness myself. I have a pride problem. And I have problems with bitterness. Going on 15 years, um, saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. Still have that stuff, unfortunately. Why? Flesh. <laughs> and there are those out there who worship flesh. Oh, wow. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Christ has forgiven who? Those who are saved of the church of the living God. You don't come to the Lord on his terms. You're not saved. You don't come to the Lord the way he prescribed for us today. Um, you're not saved. Okay? So this is talking about who has... Who has Christ forgiven? Those who belong to him of the church of the living God who came to him on his terms. The people who uh, just believe or can say something or elect or non-elect, uh, no, those people aren't saved. Okay, this is talking about those of us who are saved. Okay, we are to be 
compassionate, kind, forgiving one another. Uh, forgive, that doesn't mean uh, that fellowship will be there. But like there are people who I believe are my brethren who we've butted heads and had to part ways. And uh, I believe they're my brother or my sister, especially uh, uh, the one. Um, we just, you know, what got in the way? This gets in the way every single time, man. Every single time. It's talking about for saved people. And were you reading this with me? Look at what Paul was addressing against that old man, the Adamic na nature, the things of the flesh. What do we see here? We see him uh, speaking against lying and corrupt words, against stealing, about being angry and sinning and going to bed uh, angry, okay? Uh, putrid, uh, rancid, rotten words coming out of your mouth. Bitterness. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from the body of this death? This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful uh, This is a worthy saying. Uh, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Excuse me. That Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Why did God save me? Why did God save you? And you're going to be proud? You're going to, well, I can do what I want to do. Yeah, you can, but it's going to cost you. And what does our Lord's honor mean to you? But yeah, you you can. All things are unlawful for you, and that you are right. Yeah. Do you really understand what it means to have Thanksgiving? Do you really understand? God, that's not for you or the church of the living God, because you do. You Christians, I thank God that he has given me the ability to gorge myself on things of the world or in the traditions of Catholics. I thank God for that liberty he has given me to be like the world. You, you, you missing it, man. You missing it. You are missing it. Absolutely you are. Yeah. Despise not prophesying. Quench not the spirit. Uh, quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Despise not prophesying. Prophesying. Now, prophesying today is different from when it was under the Old Testament. And this is the line that the Charismatics blur. In the Old Testament, the completed canon of Scripture was not yet given. Okay? And things were revealed in the Old Testament by prophets, which are here written down. Okay? Because the canon of Scripture was not completed yet. Okay? I mean, it wasn't totally completed. Um, so, so, prophesying of the, in the Old Testament was the Lord speaking through prophets, revealing truth unto the people. Today, it is finished. Today, you and I, we have the completed canon of Scripture, the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version. Okay? We today prophesy by number one, being of the church and living God, and the spirit that dwells within us, and the Lord is that spirit, the Lord within us speaks to each other through the scripture. Okay? That is how we prophesy today. By the Lord and us speaking to you through the scripture. The scripture, speaking scripture unto you, that is prophesying for us today. That's what 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6 is all about. Okay? That's how you prophesy today. So, if someone is going to be prophesying to you today, what is that? Someone who is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God is going to be reading to you something from the scriptures. That is prophesying for us today. So, and notice how it says, quench not the spirit. You quench the spirit by disobeying what the Lord says, giving, willfully choosing to give yourself over to this. Flesh always gets in the way, okay? You quench the spirit, and it also says despise not prophesying. When 
The Lord will use someone of his body, the church of the living God, to correct you, to bring you back. Okay? And how do we do that? The scripture. Okay? You and I might have a disagreement, but what is the thing that tilts the scale? Scripture. The scripture is true. This is truth. This is absolute truth. You and I have a disagreement. Uh, this is going to settle it. The scripture. Okay? The scripture is what brings us into agreement. The scripture is what brings us into unity. Okay? Absolute truth. This brings us into unity. Okay? All right? So when he says despise not prophesying, what is he talking about? The Lord is that spirit. And the Lord in you, the spirits are going to identify. The Lord in you is going to speak to you through the scriptures. Okay? So what is this? John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Remember, we are sealed until the day of redemption. And grieve not that Holy Spirit of God. And the Lord is that spirit. Our Father, Jesus Christ. Okay? John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 19 on verse 21. And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. I don't want to hear it. Quench the spirit. I, I don't want to hear the truth of scripture. Despise not prophesying. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I know for a fact that there are some of you out there who are doing things willfully and yet aren't going to the scripture because you know the scripture will tear you apart. You're quenching the spirit and despising prophesyings. When the Lord's trying to warn you, when brothers are, are, are even maybe even sisters are trying to warn you. Better think about this and examine yourself. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. And the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that light. Okay? And John chapter 7, verses 6 and 7. John chapter 7, verses 6 and 7, just two verses. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. You have today. What are you going to do with it? Hmm? Are you going to give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endureth forever? Or are you going to thank him that you have a free ticket to do things of the world and his grace covers it all? It's a liberty issue. world can't hate you, but me it hateth. Why? Because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. You quench the spirit by letting this get in the way. You despise prophesying by, I don't want to hear it, but brother... Brother, the, the, what you? The, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It's my God given right to do this. I, all things are uh, all things are lawful for me. Okay. Okay. Uh, John chapter fifteen, verses eighteen on to verse twenty-seven. John chapter fifteen, verses eighteen on to verse twenty-seven. If the world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. When you quench the spirit and despise prophesying, you are essentially saying that the servant is greater than the Lord. Huh? 
Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. See, the spirit of truth leads you and guides you into all truth. And the spirit will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and will rebuke you and correct you and admonish you and all that. Absolutely. But see, the Lord that lives in us is pure, holy, undefiled, just, lovely. And he guides us into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen, both seen, and hated both me and my father. Right there again, he's calling himself the father. Okay? This cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. For when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, who will guide you into all truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things hold fast that which is good prove all things does that mean that we tempt the lord absolutely not but what is it talking about very simple this one is very simple this one is kind of a no-brainer acts chapter 17 acts chapter 17 i can almost do this verbatim for you but i'm not going to Acts chapter 17, verses 10 on to verse 12. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Search the, scripture daily, search the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore, because they were noble, therefore, because they searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few, many. Why? Because they were noble and searched the scriptures. Okay? Don't just sit there being pacified and... Uh, satisfied with someone flashing scripture verses at you like that so you can't comprehend. Well, I can pause it. You're lazy. You're not being a Berean. Get, get the book and search these things yourselves. I always tell you, follow along. Okay? See, the devil through Christianity makes you trust in someone because they 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 on a video in a pulpit because they sound good or they're reading from the scriptures themselves but they're not encouraging you hey you follow along okay get the get the scriptures and follow along people who are deceivers don't do that there are some who are deceivers who do that very few, but most of the time, about eight out of ten times, they they don't say, follow me along. They don't give you the references. They don't say, come, 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 come on, let's do this together. Okay? Let's do this together. Besides, if I skip a groove in a comedy, it's like, oh, hey, Brad, you forgot that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, forgive me. Okay? <laughs> All right? These were more noble, noble thing, nobility, than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Okay, that, that sounds like truth. 
and search the scriptures daily whether these those things were so. Okay, that sounds like truth. I'm gonna okay, you're saying this. It's like, oh, but what about oh that's another dispensation? Oh, okay, rightly divine. Okay. Okay, oh. Oh boy. That's true. Or praise the Lord, that's true. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and of course, of course, uh, uh, where are we? Uh, Romans 12, just one verse, Romans 12, verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. Come on, fingers. Uh, Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And what is good? What is good? What is good? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. How do you prove all things? Through the scripture. And what is good? God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He has magnified his word above his name. You can trust the authorized version of the scriptures. Abstain! Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it looks evil, stay away from it. Well, what is evil? Yea, hath God said. Uh, okay, have you, have you figured this out? Okay. Quench not the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? By giving yourself over to the flesh every single time. Okay, by disobeying. I have the right to do what I want to do. Sure do. But it's going to cost you, buddy. Okay. All right. Despise not prophesying. Hey, brother. Uh, uh, get, come here. Come here. Let's, let's talk. I don't want to hear it. Uh, bro brother. Uh, uh, sister. I, I don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold fast that which is good. Okay. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance. All. If it looks evil, stay away from it. Well, what is evil? Uh, you want to know what evil is? Search the scriptures daily. Uh, search the scriptures daily. What are these things we sow? Uh, Psalm 101. Psalm 101, verses 1 on to verse 5. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And how, will you, how do you do that? By How do you do that? By proving all things through the scriptures, searching the scriptures daily, whether these things are so, be so, excuse me, and holding fast that which is good. What is good? God, okay? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Cleave to me. I can still, to this very day, remember those Fear Factory lyrics and beats, Hollywood movies that I remember uh, from Hollywood, movie, Hollywood movies that I saw only one time. Ugh. Okay? Cleaves to you. Cleaves to you. Like dung on the bottom of your shoe. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. No, have fellowship with. We prefer one another. We already touched on that in this. Okay, well, I, I'd rather be with my brethren, my sisters, uh, you know, I would rather be with them in fellowship than with lost people, absolutely. Absolutely. Who so privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look 
and a proud heart will not I suffer. Especially when it's me. Ah, right? Yeah. It's a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Do you really understand what it means to be thankful? Wait till you test it. What if he takes it all away? Will you be able to be thankful then? Hmm? Would you be able to? Hmm? Uh, yes. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Brad, we're, I'm not in ministry. You're in the ministry of reconciliation. You might not do this. You might not pass out tracts. But you know what? We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? That doesn't mean that you as a woman have, go around usurping authority over a man and teaching. You, certain one, you're still doing that. You're, st you're still doing that. Yeah. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, with yea hath God said, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves and every man's conscience in the sight of God. Walking our talk, talking our walk. <laughs> yeah, doing it. You know, that, you know, like it says in Romans chapter 12, okay, who are we proving this to? Who are we proving this to? Ourselves? No. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Put on the new man. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us, those who are saved, who come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, called upon his name. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We all are in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? We all are. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You know, my wife has been a witness unto other women out there and has given out tracts and has even talked to other women about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, among women. Okay. All right. It's, it's beautiful. You know, um, our one neighbor down here who, who's married to a Freemason, by the way, witnessing on to this wife of a Freemason um, about, you know, the truth. <laughs> like, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. <laughs> okay? But it, it's beautiful to see my wife when she witnesses on to other women. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to see. Beautiful thing to see. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. If you're a Christian, okay, one of these Christians in the buildings, you're saved by your own belief or because you can say something or you're saving yourself by your works or you're elected, you're not saved. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him who lives within us. 
okay? And Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 8 to verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 to verse 17. Abstain from all appearance of evil. But now ye also put off all these. Anger. We just saw here in this video. Be ye angry, but sin not. Okay? You can be angry with a cause. A cause that is val validated through scripture. Not because your little tootsies were stopped. Or because someone is making you aware of the vileness of the traditions of men. Okay? But now ye also put off all these. Anger. Wrath. Gotta get even. Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Salvithically, pertaining to salvation, there is no difference. And you got to watch out for people who say that in salvation is predicated by skin color. Watch out for those devils. Culturally, culturally, okay, I'm of Japheth. There are some of you brethren that are of Ham and even some that are of Shem, even of uh, our Hebrews, okay, descended of Shem, okay, culturally. But when it comes to salvation, salvithically, there is no difference, okay? Salvithically, the color that God sees is red, okay? God, God has got a variety. He likes variety. He does. But when it comes to salvation, there's only one color, red, when it comes to salvation, okay? And in salvation, you're not a Jew. You're not a Greek. You're not a barbarian. You're not a Scythian. You're not bond or free. But brethren, in salvation. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Now see, the elect. Elect, again, i got to go through this. You go the way that God chose. What did God choose? God chose the way of the cross. God chose the way of the cross. Okay? And since he elected the way of the cross, you go that way that he prescribed the cross, that means you're of the elect, okay? Also context, okay? There are other places in scripture where the elect is talking, uh, clearly speaking about the Hebraic Jewish people. Yes, context here. The Pauline epistles especially, the elect he is talking about are those who go the elected way of the cross, Okay? Got to watch out for these people, brethren. Okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind. You think you're something when you're nothing? Oh. Yeah. Meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is self-sacrifice. Okay? Charity is not liberty, nor is liberty charity. Our, char our liberty is derived from Christ's charity, self-sacrifice, absolutely. But they are two different things. Watch out for little jerks who want to justify paganism and say that they're the same thing. They're not. Okay? They're not. Watch out for those people. Okay? And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And he's within you, the spirit of truth. Are you uh, quenching the spirit? Are you despising prophesying? Uh, prophesying? Hmm? Hmm? Are you abstaining from all appearances of evil? Are you proving all things? Are you holding fast that which is good? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And you're going to do that which is pagan unto the name of the Lord. God help you. God help you. God help you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 24 again. Verse 16 on verse 25, on uh, verse 24, excuse me. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You do that, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body, that's what a person is, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Oh, let us give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That's going to be it for this video. This video is going to be short. The video, Friday's video... <laughs> Friday's video is going to be kind of a little um, more rougher. <laughs> you have 365 days in a year to shew thankfulness, to be thankful. Why relegate it to just one day? And what are you thankful for? And how are you thankful? See, these are things that only you and the Lord can hammer out together. But I'm going to tell you that here in America, in America, when you see Christianity in the world uh, engaged in the same thing and calling it thankfulness, you got problems. You got big problems. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Do you really? Do you, there are those of you that do. I, yes. But do you really understand? Do you really understand what it means to have thanksgiving unto the Lord? That you're not righteous, that you're not good. And much wisdom is much grief, and in he that and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Well, I guess then the Lord must not be too beautiful and altogether lovely unto the, some of you, because uh, if you get offended about someone questioning whether or not you really know what it means to be thankful, um, you think pretty highly of yourself, don't you? Don't you? Or is it the perverse aspect of that? You think very lowly of yourself, but yet in that is yet a perverse way of self-exhortation? Have you met people like that? I know there's this one young, very tragic young man that love who I love very dearly, who does that, who through self-debasing, yet exalts himself in that it's like wow that that that's bad that's bad gotta watch out for that too because hey even i can do that myself 
you know, I'm so bad, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. Uh, yeah, I'm so bad. Look at how great I am because I'm so bad, right? You have 365 days a year to be thankful. Why just one day? And if you only are thankful for just one day out of the year, you're a Christian, huh? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope, um, I hope you consider these things we talked about. And hey, read Psalm 107. Read Psalm 107. Sing a, a, sing a hymn. Sing a song unto the Lord. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And be ye thankful who saved a wretch like me.